All right. So looking at the Mongol successes here, you know, so we start off with this idea that for the Mongols, if you were a male, you were probably eligible for military service. From the ages 15 to 60, you could be conscripted, meaning saying, hey, guess what? Uncle Chinggis wants you, you know, the Uncle Sam, you know, he's got the hat on and he's point I want you to be in the army. Yeah, Uncle Chinggis wants you for the army. And the thing though is it was considered a pride, honor. You know, just like when we talked about the Spartans last year and how war was the center of their society, that everything they did was focused on war. It was the same thing for the Mongols, where to be a man, it was to be a warrior. You know, you had to be have your battle prowess, you had to be able to fight, you had to be able to kill. And they would basically have everything that they would do be part of their training. You know, when they're hunting animals, they would do massive hunts and they would treat it just like a military operation where they would go, they would encircle, they would do military tactics to even just hunt their animals. So they're always practicing for war. And they were extremely disciplined. When we're looking at some primary sources next week, we're going to see how they organized the Mongolian army into different units of tens, of hundreds, and thousands. And if you broke ranks, the punishment was death. And the thing, though, is it wouldn't only be your death. It would be the death of your entire cadre. So, for example, we know that... um, Leighton is incredibly brave. And Leighton, because there were female Mongol warriors, they weren't as common, but they did exist, Leighton charges into battle. But her nine other friends were too scared? Well, that would be because Leighton showed prowess, no fear, the other nine would be executed. And if you have groups within your group of 100 being executed, that 100 could be executed. Or the same thing, If Lydia is going and knowing that it's time to do a tactical retreat and the others don't retreat, that unit could be wiped out as well. So really, your life depended on the discipline that you had. And not only your discipline, but your peers' discipline. Now, these Mongol forces, they were equipped for speed. We talked yesterday about how they could go 60 to 80 miles a day. You know, they didn't have big... Uh, wagons following them with all sorts of supplies. They lived off the land. They took what they needed. They burned the rest. We talked about their mail system, so they're able to communicate over huge distances. They were all about speed. We talked about how you could probably smell them before they got there, but by the time you knew the Mongols were coming, it was too late. Here's the thing, and you're going to be shocked that this is actually um, unique to them because today it's just so common. They valued military intelligence, reconnaissance. Today, we want to know exactly what we're getting into before we get into it. You know, we have drones now and the spy going. We have spy satellites going, talking about this or that. But for the the medieval period, please stop doing that there, Hayden. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, You know, they wouldn't know what was coming up. They would just, they would fight what they fought. Whereas for the Mongols, they would send scouts out miles and miles and miles ahead. They would go look at your city, say, okay, well, those are where the defenses are. We think we have about this many people living in the city. We think these are how many soldiers were there. They got a complete picture before they went in and attacked. And the thing is, when they attacked, they adapted to the situation. In the very beginning, the Mongols didn't know how to do siege warfare. They'd never never come across walled fortifications before. But When they started attacking China, they came across walled cities all the time. There's one story about how there was a walled city near a river, um, and they couldn't get through the wall. So what did they do? The Mongols dammed up the river, meaning blocked the river, redirected the river's flow right into the city walls to destroy the walls, to breach the walls, to be able to go through and attack. Ingenuity, determination. Just like how we saw yesterday with them going and building a bridge out of boats so they could charge across. The Mongols saw a problem. They solved it. Especially if that solving meant the destruction of their enemies. So after they conquer the Chinese, they learn how to do siege warfare. They learn about sapping, which is to build tunnels under walls and light fires to the walls would literally crumble 
uh, before the defenses. You know, to go and build catapults, trebuchets, those kind of things. They learn that kind of technology. And one of the things that was amazing about the Mongols is they adapted, they took what their enemies had and then put that as part of their toolkit, part of their arsenal. They saw the Chinese fire lance, the earliest of guns, and they added that to the repertoire. They saw the Chinese used fireworks to scare their enemies. Because I know today, fireworks are entertainment. We see them at the 4th of July. We see them when we go to the Frederick Keys. But back then, if you saw something explode in bright colors in the sky, um, that was typically considered like magic and very, very extremely scary. The Mongols said, oh, yeah, let's do that. They wound up using smoke to hide Mongolian forces or to confuse enemies. I mean, they they took everything they could from their enemies and they used it. And it was just incredible, um, the military machine they create. But it wasn't just stuff and technology. There's a famous story about one of the Chinese generals. They fought so bravely against the Mongols that the Mongols, instead of killing them, said, hey, join us, become one of us, still be a general, use your talents. And he did. And he became a great Mongolian general even though he was Chinese, conquered. Once again, I just want to remind you, all of these pictures of Chinggis, we don't know what he looked like. They're just guesses. Uh, and our next slide kind of gets into this. Chinggis wanted you to think the very worst. Someone said yesterday, I can't remember this class or the other class, that, oh, the Mongols, were they cannibals? And I said, no, but they wanted you to think they were. They would, Chinggis would love you to think that he was going to feast on your flesh after he killed you because that would make him that much more scary. So let's look at how they scared people. So one of the things that they love to do, uh, we sing it in our song, they feign retreats, then come upon you. Human flesh like your skin, you, being cannibal, eating people. Yeah, gross, right? They didn't do that, but if someone said a story that they did, they would go with it. Now, they would run away on purpose. So they would send a small amount of soldiers. They would battle the steels. And the steels would say, oh, this isn't so bad. And they would think they were winning and battle the Mongols back. Now, we've talked about this before, that most of the casualties in warfare happen when an enemy is retreating. And let's face it, you're mad. You've been fighting. You want to get, you have your blood loss going on. You want to fight. And so you chase after that enemy. You pursue them. That's exactly what the Mongols wanted you to do. The steels, they chase after the Mongols after they run away, but it's all a trap. They lead them into a big open area where there are more Mongols that circle around them, and it's just devastating. Another thing that Chinggis Khan would do, he would go and massacre entire cities so that when he went to your city, Nora, you'd surrender without lifting a finger. Because if you surrendered, you probably lived. You probably were spared. Not always, but many of you would survive. If you resisted, death, just like Nalea said in our do now. Sometimes, though, it wouldn't be um, as good as you think. Sometimes what they would do is they would take some of your people and they would put them in front of the Mongol army. So then when they attack the next town or city, guess where those first arrows and defenses are going to go through? The innocent people that were pushed in front of the Mongol army. They'd use them as human shields. There's a very famous story about how there was a group of Persian merchants who wanted to go to China. They wanted to continue on the Silk Road. They wanted to get all of those amazing trade goods. And they start heading east. And as they're going, they start seeing snow-covered mountains a little faster than they thought they would and think, oh, wow, we're going to make it. To, we're almost to India. We're making such great time. And as they got closer, you don't have to write this bottom part, by the way, they started smelling the stench. Death and decay, it smells like nothing else from what I understand. And they realized that they were not mountains in the distance that were covered with snow, but it was mountains and piles of sun-bleached bones from a city that the Mongols had annihilated. Those merchants, they just turned right around and left. They didn't want to get involved in any of that. And that's the Mongols leaving mountains of bones in their wake. Now, tomorrow we're going to get into some of the positives because it's all just not negative and terrible. That's kind of what makes the Mongols so fascinating. But we're going to end with a quote from a Persian contemporary. Contemporary means someone who lived at this time. 
In one stroke, a world which billowed with fertility was laid desolate, and the regions thereof became a desert, and the greater part of the living and their skin and bones crumbling in the dust, and the mighty were humbled and immersed in the calamities of perdition. This idea that they took a beautiful land and laid waste to it that it was a desert that where fertility where there was so much then there was nothing and that was the mongols my students that is the notes for today are there any questions <laughs>